this morning sitkenu um we could pray first then we get into this morning's class uh and yeah good morning good morning divya just like to request someone to pray be someone who hasn't prayed recently on this call to lead in prayer please yes rosalind please go ahead yes rosalind thank you lord jesus for this wonderful day thank you lord for this session that we are going to have we come before you lord father god as we receive the ministry of your word we ask you to enlighten our eyes of understanding give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand your word as it will be taught this morning lord i also pray and ask you to anoint our dear pastor as she delivers your word every word that comes out of her mouth but may it uh, bring a breakthrough in our lives father god we thank you and we bless you in jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you roslyn god bless uh, thank you for leading in prayer uh, i just wanted to say that uh, since the last date for the online students your as assignment submission was some time ago you have completed it uh, so you know i i will okay hopefully uh, soon so uh, that that is something i want to tell the online students but the e learning students um, your set of assignments are completely different and your marks are generated uh, almost immediately as soon as you complete your assignments so uh, it's like two different sets of assignments okay so e learning two more assignments are due and um, online students one assignment uh, is due and you know both the corrected uh, your marks will be given online students and also your next assignment will be posted uh, shortly so that is just a piece of information there Uh, Rosin, you have another question, or is that raised hand from begin from that earlier? Sorry, ma'am, I forgot to remove. No. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Okay, fine. So let's continue. We've been studying about fasting, and we saw, you know, uh, what are how we can fast, and uh, what are the benefits of fasting. So some brief introduction on fast. last session now today let's continue we've been talking about fasting uh, today we will try to answer how to fast okay so that that is something we'll touch on and if we have sufficient time then why to fast you know we'll we'll look at that as well so one of the reasons we saw many benefits of fasting earlier but i just want to kind of touch on the benefits of fasting before we get into how to fast uh, one is that you know we are obe obeying jesus remember jesus said that his disciples when he is gone the bridegroom is gone the uh, disciples will fast so this is an act of obedience unto the lord so that is a reason why we fast and in the book of joel you know we find that uh, at least three times uh, there is a call for a fast there is a call for a fast and the call for the fast sort of precedes the promise of the outpouring of the holy spirit so when we fast when we pray you know we talked about personal benefits right we said that we will have a greater focus intensity you know we will hear from god and be strengthened and all of those things but in addition to that we are being obedient to god and we can also expect an outpouring of the holy spirit you know especially when we fast together as a community or a group of people and uh, these are all mm, uh, you know points enough to encourage us to motivate us to fast uh, even though fasting can be somewhat challenging for many of us you know, all the benefits uh, they outweigh the difficulty of going through the fast okay so now let's a uh, touch on a very important passage in the bible that addresses this 
spiritual act of fasting it is isaiah 58 isaiah 58 you can just quickly turn to isaiah 58 uh, if you have a bible open in front of you or those of us who are using our computers mm, just go to that passage isaiah 58 and be ready because we're going to look at that entire the beginning of the passage today okay all right so remember uh we talked about you know the different kinds of fasts one can undertake but at the same time we said that a fast is about our devotion to god a fast is about our consecration to god a fast is about our obedience to god so it's not the type of food or the duration of time you know it's uh, um, uh, unfortunately you know people take pride in the type of fast okay i fasted i did an absolute fast because it shows your capacity uh, for self control so it, it's something that you know you can brag about to others oh i fasted 3 days absolute fast or you know i didn't eat anything for 40 days and it uh, it it is something we can use to impress others okay but what is the actual motivation of that fast it is to please god so isaiah 58 is a passage that talks about the kind of fast which the lord accepts now for people or even for us personally individually we can be impressed with any kind of fast that we do but how does it matter if the lord is not impressed with it so we want to talk about we'll call it the chosen fast okay the chosen fast because it's all about the lord choosing our fast or the lord being happy about our fast so that's what we are going to discuss god has to choose our fast and god has to be pleased with our fast so what kind of a fast so the question is what how what kind of preparation is required for the fast so we will look at it in these categories one is the preparation for the fast so defining the motivation uh, and the attitudes the right attitudes for a chosen fast or something that god approves of uh, and then you know we will move on to why we fast you know even in the last class these questions came up why if when we are seeking god you know if we are asking for direction is it okay to fast so why are we fasting that is the second question we will answer so the purpose of the fast and then we will move on to touching on the promises i just told us that the book of joel that promises the outpouring of the holy spirit mm, when god's people engage in fasting so that is a promise we can hold on to it we can expect god to send an outpouring of the holy spirit so similarly there are other promises that god has for those who will fast and pray so let us first go ahead and read through the entire passage um as i look at uh, the chapter in front of me excuse me uh, it has 14 14 verses so uh, how about we take two verses each to read uh, so just go ahead like if you haven't read it if someone else has read it you want to read it then you know you go next or we can go by the order uh, of our names here if someone is not reading it then uh, you don't worry like if there's a long pause then the next person can read it okay so that way we can save time so can we do that can we all read two two verses each yes ma'am okay so how many ever folks uh, maybe seven uh, people can read it um, yeah so uh, abu becker would you please begin do you have the chapter in open in front of you Isaiah 58 verses 1 and 2 
Okay, if someone is unable, you can also put it on the chat and say I am not able to read or something. Okay, madam, can I read? Uh, uh, okay, Elisha, in a in a moment, please. We are going according to the alphabetical order. Okay. Okay, okay just okay. hold on. Just hold on. Okay, I think Abu Bakr is not able to read. Anita, are you able to read? Verses one and two. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Yeah, please read. Um, uh, Isaiah, 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 chapter fifty-eight, verse one. Cry mm -hmm. aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people. Their transgression and the house of house of Jacob their sin. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ord uh, forsake the ordinance of their God, they ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Okay, thank you, thank you, Anita. That's really helpful. So, verse three and four would be Aradhana. Aradhana, are you able to read? If not, you can just put it on the chat in case it's too noisy around you. Okay, I'm assuming she's not able to. Uh, blessing, would you please be able to read? Okay, she's not able. That's okay. That's fine, Aradna. Uh, thank you for that uh, message. Uh, blessing, are you able to read? Verse three and four. Okay, uh, I'm assuming she's not. Uh, Divya. Uh, could you please take up three and four, and then Elisha can read uh, five and six. Sure. Um, why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls, and you have take and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, Elisha, you can go next. Okay, five and six. Verses five and six, Elisha. You're on mute. You're muted. Okay, maybe he's having a network issue. When he's back, we'll see. Mm, all right, let's continue. Uh, we were at five and six. So whoever's next here, Jeffina. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, go ahead. I hear chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. You humble yourself by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourself with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burdens of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Mm. Yes, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jafina. Uh, yeah, we will go with the next person. That would be okay. Elisha is back. Elisha, are you able to read now? Jafina read five and six. You can do seven and eight. Okay, no worries. Uh, the next person. Uh, Leah, okay, we'll just go with okay, Elisha is saying he can't hear. Elisha, I think the others are able to hear. I don't know why uh, you're not able to hear. 
you are muted would you like to unmute okay he is having an issue for sure okay linden uh, linden are you able to read the next two verses i know this is uh, taking a lot of time but it's okay uh, let's hear all as many voices as possible today yeah yes linden uh, you can read 7 um, and 8 no yeah yeah ma'am one second is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood it will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the lord will be your rear guard okay thank you thank you linden uh thank you for reading we will have the next person read mm, lubega are you able to read nine and ten yeah okay yes okay so what we'll do is lubega can read ise um lubega can read ise 58 verses 9 and 10 and then uh, uh elisha can read 11 and same chapter ise 58 11 and 12 verses yeah thanks sivya Yes, Lubega. Please go ahead. Unmute yourself. You can read Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, verse nine. Mm. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer, and you shall cry, and He sh He will say, "Here I am." If you take away the yoke from your midst, the point, the pointing of the finger, and the speaking of the speaking wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as a noon day. Mm. Okay, thank you, thank you, Lubega. Yeah, amen, amen. Ah, uh, Elisha, you can go next. Eleven and twelve. Okay, okay. Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, verses eleven and twelve. And the Lord will guide you, you continually, and satisfy your desire in coarse places, and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. Verse twelve. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach. the restorer of streets to dwell in amen amen man thank you thank you so much uh, elisha k okay, uh, nicholson yes please last last two verses there 13 and 14 yes um isaiah 58 was 13 if you turn away your foot from the sabbath from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the sabbath a delight the holy day of the lord honorable and shall honor him not doing your own ways nor finding your own pleasure nor speaking your own words then you shall delight yourself in the lord and i will cause you to ride on high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of jacob your father the mouth of the lord has spoken mm Okay, wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Nicholson. So we have uh, gone through the entire chapter uh, of Isaiah fifty-eight today, and we've seen here that God has an expectation. The people um, that Isaiah is prophesying to, were they fasting? Were they committing themselves to the Lord? Yes, but God was asking them for a chosen fast. 
okay what is a chosen fast chosen fast is nothing but an acceptable fast a pleasing fast okay something that has been asked for by the lord so we've seen in the passage you know how god says oh you've done this and that but you know what i want you to do certain other things so when we fail to do the fast the way god wants us to do it then it doesn't get accepted okay remember in the old testament we we have this um uh you know when when the uh, the sacrifice is presented it's consumed by the fire and that's a symbol of god's acceptance if it is not accepted by god our sacrifice is of no use so that is the reason we are studying how to bring an acceptable or in other words a chosen fast unto the lord so we saw how you know god begins uh, speaking to these people in the first two um, verses here it's it's like god uh, it, it's like letting the people know okay tell my people their transgression and the house of jacob their sins and yet these people seem to be uh, traditionally doing the right thing okay which is to let's let's say in this case fasting so they knew okay i must skip some meals i must remain hungry and that is uh, something as an act of worship unto the lord so they were doing it not that they were not doing it but still god says you let my people know what is wrong with them okay uh, so god says this is this is you know it it just doesn't equate i i'll read the first two verses for us cry aloud spare not lift up your voice like a trumpet tell my people their transgression and the house of jacob their sins yet they seek me daily so there are issues okay uh, there there is a sin issue and yet people are continuing to keep the practices yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their god they ask of me the ordinances of justice they take delight in approaching god so the uh, the actions that the people need to have they are continuing with it as if nothing is wrong but god has seen through their activities and he's saying that you know there are issues there are uh, sins there are problems that have to be addressed and only then can this fast be an acceptable fast so let's continue what else what else is god telling them we'll go to the verses 3 and 4 over here he says why have we fasted they ask and you have not seen why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice so it's as if the people are questioning they're saying you told us to fast we fasted why are you not accepting our fast then you know god uh, goes on in fact in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers indeed you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high so god is addressing not the activity in itself you know maybe they skip their meals they put on sackcloth was as was their practice of humbling themselves those days so they did all that but what god is saying is that you know he was looking at the way uh, they were treating the people who were working for them so he he is saying that the people are being oppressed the workers are being oppressed okay on your fast days and that was not at all impressive to god so it it is something like you know where he says in fact in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers so you can just imagine you know the way jesus addressed the pharisees and you know the the so the so called teachers of the law uh, now maybe on the day of the fast they could have skip the meals and because they are so they are feeling weak uh, they are not eating so they must have doubled up the work for the uh, people who were helping them okay let's say even in an office setting now let's just put it this way i go to office okay and i have people working for me now maybe on a particular day i say today i am fasting so if i am generally working 8 hours i tell them i can't work 
two hours at least you know you have to give me a, a compensation because today i'm fasting so then who does that extra two hours of work i put it on somebody so it looks like the people who were fasting they were practicing this discipline they were actually exploiting others they were not doing it in the right way okay and that was not pleasing to god god noticed all these things he said oh yeah just for the activity sake you are fasting but you know you are it's about your own interest because you don't want you know you you don't you want to make that profit anyhow so you're dumping all that work on your workers so in other words you know the people who are working for us if they are not treated properly uh that is something that affects the acceptance of our sacrifice unto the lord you know can you imagine god is pointing to our relationship with the people who work for us okay and he's saying if we are oppressing them uh, or and especially on our fast days if we are oppressing them and we still want to make a profit so we double up their workload it is not pleasing to god and you also see here he says for your own pleasure or the intention is not so much okay god i'm humbling myself you know i want to seek you but it is more of yeah i should get this i should get it's more like their own pleasure our own pleasure uh, then that kind of a fast is not pleasing to god so when we are discussing about what kind of fast is an acceptable or a chosen fast god is really touching on the attitudes he's touching on attitudes he's touching on relationships so let's see we'll look at what is being told in this uh, in in the first few verses and then we'll try to conclude you know what are the areas that were addressed so we saw he's talking about uh, you know our self interest which is not pleasing to him he's talking about us oppressing others and that is not pleasing to him then moving on okay mm, let's look at verse 3 uh, and 4 yeah four also yeah he says indeed you fast for strife and debate was for and to strike with the fist of wickedness you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high so it simply says strife and debate in our relationships okay uh, are we are we the kind who uh, bring up quarrels and you know complaints and just make things very unpleasant so if that is the case again you know having our relationships in that condition and still doing a fast and think that god is happy with it when we are not willing to rectify our relationships and here very specifically it talks about our relationship mainly with the people who work for us if that is bad then our fast will not be acceptable so it's funny isn't it we we feel that okay god would address uh, uh yeah you, you should not you should not eat food you should not drink water make sure that it not you're fasting for 12 hours he's not really addressing the that that we, uh, area of fasting it's more about heart attitude it's more about lifestyle okay uh and when we have the right attitude and the right lifestyle what we are understanding here is it makes our fast acceptable unto the lord okay so these are the things that matter to god uh, and and we are beginning to see that okay let's continue we do verse 5 6 and 7 here what does it say verse 5 he says is it a fast that i have chosen you know after you've oppressed all your workers um, and you still want to make a profit you doubled up work on them so that you can be comfortable because you're fasting you're weak okay then he's asking the question is it a fast that i have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to speak out uh, spread out sackcloth and ashes would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the lord and outwardly humbling ourselves that's not enough is what god is pointing to verse 6 and 7 so god is saying okay you've done it like this now let me tell you how i want it then he's saying is this not the fast that i have chosen 
to loose the bonds of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh wow all of this is addressing heart attitude actions of righteousness okay and a chosen fast is really a well rounded fast beyond the activity it is a true worship through our life to god now that's what god is expecting so he said right now the way you all are doing it by oppressing the the workers that's not correct so how what is correct the chosen fast he says here loose the bonds of wickedness okay that simply uh, you know it, let me read it in another version for a clearer understanding for us so uh, it says in the message to break the chains of injustice so when we observe some injustice that is going on you know that we have some contribution in uh, breaking that so that is god's expectation from us so what else does he say he says to undo the heavy burdens in the message version let's look at it you know the message just to understand it uh, in a simpler way we are reading it so what does undo the heavy burdens mean get rid of exploitation in the workplace again you know our relationship with those who serve us are we being proud and you know just thrusting things on people god doesn't like that attitude okay moving on to let the oppressed go free again coming to the message version it simply says free the oppressed you know if we have bound people in some way put loads on them and bound them uh then we must be careful and of course in those days we know they had a slavery system right they were oppressing uh, people very directly and god never liked that on one hand these uh, religious people they are oppressing the weak on the other hand they are fasting and they are so proud about it and they saying god we did it for you you know didn't we didn't we fast the correct way you know we ate the right foods and god is saying i am not impressed if you want to bring me a chosen fast you address the wrong things that are taking place you know through your life so he says you must lose the bonds of wickedness or break the chains of injustice then you must get rid of exploitation in the workplace and then he's saying that you must free the oppressed so when we see you know uh, people who are bound we bring freedom to them okay then later on it says to share your bread with the hungry so that's quite simple to understand to just have a heart of compassion where we are willing to give we are willing to bless others okay we are willing to share whatever resources we have been blessed with okay so that kind of an attitude god expects and he says bring to your house the poor who are cast out so again you know you could take it in the literal sense where we we help those who are in need and who do not have the resources so bring home inviting homeless uh, uh, poor people uh, blessing them in some way right doing these 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 acts of mercy these are things that will bless god's heart so god is inviting his people to have a real walk of uh righteousness to have a heart of justice to have a heart of compassion to have a heart of giving okay to have a heart of mercy these things are addressing the attitude the motivation okay uh, the lifestyle of a believer let's move on we are told you know when you see the naked that you cover him honor a heart of honor it's not to pull down people when you see the naked means yes one is those who don't have clothes you know we we clothe them or give to the needs of the people but on the other hand you know maybe in in a more symbolic sense you know people are in shame 
for whatever reason we don't make it worse for them but we are there to help you know we are there to um uh be bring that honor upon their lives then it says do not hide yourself from your own flesh you know in the new testament we we see that you know god says uh, mm, that on the one hand we are told like you know if you don't leave your your family your father your mother and come then you're not worthy of the gospel but on the other hand as you read the uh, instructions that the apostles wrote to the church we see you know somebody who does not care for his own family is worse than an unbeliever so we have to look at it in context god is not saying abandon your family that's not what he's saying you know he's saying the attitude that we must have for the kingdom is we prioritize the kingdom that's what jesus meant when he said that you know if you don't leave your father and mother and then come to me so prioritize the kingdom that is the meaning of it because in other passages we are told that we must take care of our family now again we are told here that if we abandon our own uh, flesh or family members who are in need and we say uh, no i am busy you know i am busy with the kingdom of god don't ask me anything don't i cannot help you god sees all these things and he doesn't like it so he says do not hide yourself from your own flesh meaning and in the new testament we see whatever good is possible by you you do it don't withhold it so um, we are supposed to have that uh, you know that dutiful dutiful heart towards our family so whatever is due okay I remember even the pharisees they said why should i help my father and mother you know that that korban thing i will give that money to the temple but jesus never liked it so whatever is our due responsibility towards our family we need to do that so that's what we are being told here do not hide yourself from your own flesh or be available in other words in simpler words be available to your own family Okay, is uh, is that a question? I can hear someone is unmuted. Okay, no worries. Yeah, it was by mistake. Okay, let's continue. So you see here, uh, there are all these matters addressing one's attitude and uh, uh, one's you know life, and not just the act of fasting. and god has made it so clear in isaiah 58 so if i want to fast well i have to work deep within my own life to bring an acceptable or a chosen fast to the lord and god is also telling us how to do it do you do you see that in all these verses what we were addressing relationships relationship uh with the workers relationship with people we don't know and who are in need relationship with uh, those whom we find oppressed a relationship with our own family members when our relationships are not right our fast will not be effective okay so that is the point now let's go further we will skip some verses here and we will continue with verses 9 and 10 let's see what these verses have to tell us okay Okay, no, we have. Yeah, we are going to skip verse eight here. We'll do nine and ten. It says, "Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and He will say, 'Here I am.' If you again, what should you do? He's telling us, if you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wicked wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry." and satisfy the afflicted soul then your light shall shine in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday so some blessings also got included in in these verses that we read but there are pointers there are indicators it says take away the yoke from your midst okay in other words again if you read up the message uh, version it translates as get rid of unfair practices you know we can be christians but we may not be walking in the righteousness of god we might have some wrong practices in our workplace and we are okay with it right but god sees these things and as the people uh, of of isaiah's time they were being told to check their wrong practices i'm sure this applies to us in our um, day and age today so we are more in the corporate business and we are more in you know uh technology and things like that but even there 
there can be unfair practices whatever counts as an unfair practice god is saying come on get rid of it okay get rid of it i want you to be fair i want you to be just i want you to be righteous so we address our life uh, problems in our life then moving on so stop pointing the finger or uh, pointing the finger is um, you know like contempt or putting down or blaming another person so you can say that and you can also say take responsibility we take responsibility for our own lives so god is calling us to to become more responsible and not to you know put down others or blame others for the things that are going on and then it says stop speaking wickedness what is wickedness uh the message uh version you know it's a paraphrase version it's not the most accurate of course uh, but it paraphrases it says quit gossiping about others sins so wickedness can involve all kinds of words that we speak you know how sad isn't it like uh, if uh, i boast about my fasting yeah i have been fasting for 5 years but when you know me and you know my uh, you know life you might get scared of me you say oh that person ah uh, she will gossip she will take the story from here and tell there and you know put people down it doesn't add up it doesn't match up because i'm trying to impress everyone with the fact that i'm fasting but what am i doing with my lips i am speaking wickedness or in this case gossip and that is not the chosen fast for god so god is saying stop speaking wickedness okay put an end to every evil word the gnp version uh, of the bible it says put an end to every evil word it could be anything it could be anything gossip it could be mm, you know slander it could be different things stop that and then it says extend your soul to the hungry again you know the way we saw attitude of compassion attitude of mercy attitude of generosity right now we are seeing generosity to the hungry you know as believers sometimes um, i mean let me be honest you know life just gets so busy there are so many needs you know so many uh, important things for us to check off our list in the middle of your schedule when you hear oh somebody is in need or you must be, uh, there's a there's an opportunity for you to be generous sometimes we say later weekend i'll see now i'm very busy you know but god is saying you know what i really want you to awaken to these needs around you when you see a need don't close your eyes and behave as if you haven't seen it but respond respond to the person who is naked the person who is hungry to the person who is poor the person who is homeless so we are living our lifestyle consists of that compassion mercy generosity and of course righteousness you no know, wrong things injustice unfair things we stand up against those matters you know jesus said right we are the light we are salt and light so we have to stand up for what is right and then uh, there was another uh, portion there which said that satisfy the afflicted soul again you know somebody who is down somebody who is out maybe a friend calls you and they are just so depressed they need only a few minutes of our time and we say call me later i'm too busy right now you know we don't have time to minister to people in need but god says look if you want to have a chosen fast i want to see these attitudes in you and of course god is not saying that he doesn't understand our schedule and all we will we can be practical but we can still accommodate the concerns and the needs around us now one more thing one more instruction is there for a chosen fast and this is all the way we have to skip to verse 13 in the passage i'll quickly touch on that and we are just uh, in time to to wrap up so verse 13 it says if you turn away your foot from the sabbath from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the sabbath a delight the holy day of the lord honorable and shall honor him not doing your own ways nor finding your own pleasure nor speaking your own words so this is another uh, you know prerequisite for a chosen fast what is god saying god is saying i want you to honor the sabbath now some of us will have this contention and say in the new testament it says you know observing days uh, all of that uh, 
it's it's not uh you know necessary that on this particular day you must celebrate the sabbath but what is the essence of what is being said because jesus healed on the sabbath you remember the pharisees they made a big deal out of it oh this man he healed a blind person on the sabbath that became the issue not that the blind person got healed so then jesus spoke rebukingly to these people and he said look what is more important that you know a man uh, he is able to uh, save uh, his, his people save the the donkey if your donkey falls um, in the pit will you not help on the sabbath so basically when jesus did his healings he justified it and he said the sabbath is not greater right than the son of man so the point is not the day the point is the honor of our time given to the lord okay so basically we honor god we honor him with our time with our worship okay you could say since sabbath is mentioned that weekly worship yeah fine you know you honor the lord with that you honor the lord with your resources you honor the lord with your talents with the opportunities with everything basically the uh uh honor that we bring to the lord so you see it's more about uh, attitudes it's more about um, walking a, a righteous path it's more about uh, caring for the people in need right uh, it's more about exercising self control uh, it's more about honoring god and that is what makes a fast a chosen fast okay not just as simple as quit eating and yes it's done so it's not as simple as that so i'll stop with that we will in the next class we will uh, touch a little bit more on you know the purpose of the fast we will look at that and uh, hopefully you know we can also begin talking about the blessings of the fast mm, okay so here in the uh, comments uh, robert uh, sitkeno is saying like uh, gossip kitty party aunties <laughs> okay god uh, god doesn't like it so i take offense to that why only aunties sitkenu why can't it be others okay just uh, kidding uh, but yeah gossip whoever it is it's not acceptable unto the lord so uh, we have only one more minute left but i'm sure we can extend by a couple of minutes any thoughts any additional uh, points you want to add questions <laughs> divya divya is also saying yeah that uh, gossip is not good whether it's men or women yeah sure divya mm any any so we have seen you know how god is addressing deeper matters wow it it really it really awakens you right to take a good hard look at uh your own life your own the first time i read from isaiah 58 you know it really made me think i had to like take an inventory okay how are my relationships how am i treating people you know uh so it it really really made me think to this day to this day it makes me think what's going on in my life so uh i just encourage you we go back look at the passage think about your own life evaluate and see okay god you know what are all the areas help me you know how can i correct this how can i correct that yeah, so uh, god will help us mm yeah the we are saying so basically god looks at the heart right ma'am yeah god looks at the heart not just our actions yes so wow there's so much to learn about the right way of fasting okay uh yeah so if there are no more questions we can wrap it up with a word of prayer all right let's go ahead and pray then uh would like to request uh, lubega would would you be able to pray
Okay, you're muted. Shall we? Yes, yes, please. Thank you. Father in heaven, we thank you for today's lecture. We thank you for the gift of life that, that you've given to us, Lord. We also thank you for all my colleagues who are taking up this class with me here, Lord. We also thank our dear pastor who is trying to inculcate some skills, knowledge, and values of God into us so that we can have a, a, that it can have a positive impact on our lives, dear Lord. So, Lord, we know that we are not here by accident, but because of your because of your own choice and because of your own grace and mercy. So, please, Lord. As we're taking a weekend off, we also pray that this echoes in our lives as we continue to pray and we try our level best to meet on the next Thursday or next Friday in the same lecture, Lord. We do pray and believe that everything is going to come to pass in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and I say, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lubega. Uh, blessed by that and uh, have a wonderful weekend all of you and um, uh, let's honor the Lord with our worship okay uh, a special time of worship during the weekend and uh, please think about whatever we have studied and I believe that everything that we learn will help us grow in the Lord so take care and bye for now God bless you abundantly see you yes thank you so much thank you